Hi all, it's Maria Clark at Sweet Willow Designs and welcome to my studio. This is Pendant 3 in our Pendant series and this is a nice pretty white pearl on a black background. Um, I hope you enjoy or are enjoying the series. Um, I'm really having fun bringing it to you and talking about some basic jewelry making techniques. This is something that in our uh, SWD Joyful Mandala group uh, came up higher in the poll so I thought it would be fun to do the series. I hope you subscribe. I want to thank you if you have subscribed. Um, this is uh, how we get started, just sort of placing our grid on our pendant blank. I'm using a sort of a domed a pendant, but uh, pendant blank, wood pendant blank, but you could also use, you know, a flat uh, blank, whatever you have, or you can just practice on some two inch cardstock. Um, click the show more button to see all of the materials, tools and materials, most of them anyway. If I think they're readily available, I'm not necessarily going to link to them. Okay, I've got my grid marked out and I'm using one color here. I'm using the Deco Arts Dazzling Metallics White Pearl. Of course, use any colors that you like. And I'll get my larger center dot down and then I will dot eight around the center. I'm using a fairly small nail dotter um, just to kind of keep it tight, keep the design a little bit tight as we start off. And then I'm going in just uh, for my second row, slightly higher, same nail, same size nail dotter, just adding another row. I'm going in with my G6 four millimeter and placing a, a row of larger dots. I really like how well the grid marks show up on these pendants, these little pendant blanks. It really makes it um, quite easy to get a nice design down. And now I'm going in with my G6 four millimeter again, putting another row just to expand the pattern a little bit. And now I'm going in with a fairly small size and I'm going to walk some dots around. I'm just going to go around one side because I'm going to make kind of like a, a pinwheel spiral type effect here by just dotting around one side of those main dots. I'll just get that all the way around. I have sped this video up. It's about two times uh, the speed that I'm really actually going at but I wanted to be able to get a good look at this. Now I'm going to place uh, another row and of course I'm just starting it right above uh, the first dot on the previous row and you can see how that little pinwheel spiral is starting to take shape. Let me know if you're enjoying the series or if there's some other things that you'd like to see uh, in the videos. I wanted to start adding some of the jewelry making techniques so we're going to talk about another way to make uh, our own necklace finding. Uh, but there are tons of jewelry making techniques of course so if you want to see some other things like basic stringing, using crimp beads, things like that, let me know. I started out uh, doing jewelry making and so um, I really would love to share that. I'm going in with the third row and just placing another uh, row for the pinwheel. You can see that I missed one back there. I'll come back to it. All of you that uh, that worry about stuff like that. And we'll just keep building out that pinwheel. This is a really pretty design with the white pearl on the black background. Um, it's just very, very simple. I think it would be nice in a rainbow uh, kind of coloration too. I think that would be really pretty. Okay, let's finish up that one that I missed. One thing that I wanted to mention, I don't know if I've mentioned in the previous videos, but you kind of want to orient your pattern to where the center, where the actual stringing hole is so that um, you get a, you know, a sort of symmetrical look or at least a look that you're conscious of going towards um, and get make sure that your design is placed where you want it to line up with that hole. Now I'm using my small silicone brush to put a swoosh there and I just drop a little paint and then pull it around. 
Isn't that pretty? And you can see I'm kind of lining it up so I get a consistent start uh, to each one of these swooshes, kind of lining it up on the third dot as I walk the, uh, you know, from that previous row when I walked it around, I'm kind of looking, trying to line it up with that third dot and pull it around. Now I'm going to go in and just put another swish there. Going a little slightly higher than where I started the previous one. How many of you are using a lot of swooshes in your artwork? Have you been practicing that? It does take a little bit of practice, I think, but I really enjoy using this particular design or this particular dotting technique. Okay, and I'll just go in with one more. Kind of curve it just a little bit. All right, that's it. That's the finished piece. I'm not actually going to add anything more to this. I'm not going to add any top dots or anything, but you could, of course, embellish however you like. This would be pretty with crystals, I think. Um, that would look really, really nice. So let's talk about how we're going to string this particular one. So here's my finished pendant. It's dried. It's been varnished. It's signed on the back. And you can see that it's just got a simple design. The white pearl is really pretty. There's my hole. Um, there are, of course, lots of different ways to string this. In the previous video, I used uh, just a pre-made waxed cotton cord. We could do that. We could also introduce some beading. We could add some pearls. These are just glass pearls. I think they would be really pretty. And in a future video, I think we'll, we'll do a little bit of bead stringing. Um, that would be nice, I think. kind of take a look at how you think that might look. And then I also got some of this ribbon. This is a really narrow ribbon. I got white and black because I thought that that would look nice. And uh, we're going to, I think ultimately, I'm going to go ahead and use this ribbon. And I'll show you how to use another type of crimping component uh, to get that, that ribbon uh, necklace made. We're also going to need, though, a few more things. We're going to need some jump rings, a larger side jump ring for the major bale, this little spring ring clasp, and then two smaller jump rings to attach to the spring ring. This is just another type of way to connect the necklace. You've seen these in lots of different types of jewelry. Um, and so we've used a magnetic clasp in the previous ones and a, and a lobster claw and now we're going to use a spring ring. The other thing that we're going to use are these crimps. These are uh, specifically for ribbon and they this particular package I just get at my local store and it comes with some different sizes. I will link below but here's what they look like and they're just little crimps. They're a little flatter and wider than the previous crimp that we used. Uh, because they're meant more for ribbons, and they've got quite a few more teeth, and then a little loop for the bail. And we've got our jump rings, and what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to make the uh, the the attachment um, with the neck uh, with the spring ring, because um, this is another way to help you measure more accurately the length of the necklace. So here we go. I'm showing you to twist the jump ring, not pull it apart, but twist it. And we will put the little crimp on that. Open the other jump ring. These are the smaller ones that I'm using. You can use the size of jump ring that uh, works for you. I, I usually buy the um, assorted packages 
of um, jump rings so that I get a lot of variety. We'll just pop that um, clamp on there, that crimp. Now we're going to add the bail, which is this little, sp or the clasp rather, which is this little spring ring clasp. And we're going to close that up, twisting it to seat it, the end of the jump rings. And then I actually have to reopen the one jump ring because I should have just put the, uh, the uh, spring ring on it. So we'll just reopen that. And just thread that on. And close it up. Okay. Now, again, the reason that I'm doing this is so I can measure what that component looks like because if I wanted an 18 inch necklace and this is an inch or an inch and a quarter, I want to cut my stringing material accordingly so that I get an 18 inch necklace, not an 18 or 19 inch, 19 and a quarter inch necklace. So I've just measured it and it's about one and a quarter inches. And I'll use that when I cut my, my ribbon. So that's a good way to get a more accurate uh, measurement. Okay, so here I am just going to cut this real fast. I'm actually going to cut, I like my necklaces a little bit longer, so I'm actually going to cut um, probably about 19, 19 and a half inches. I'm going to cut the white, two whites and a black, and that's just a design decision. You could just use one ribbon if you liked. Because I want to add the black and the white, um, I decided that three would be best. I'm going to sandwich the black in between uh, the whites. And I, I don't think you have to be too precise about this actually if it doesn't work out um, and you know it gets twisted a little bit, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and put a knot in the end. Now with these crimps, they've got a lot of teeth as I showed you and so they should grab the ribbon pretty well but I want to give a little extra because these are pretty fine ribbons. I just want to put a little knot there. You can leave that step out if you don't really want to do it like that. And I'll put a knot on each end and just cut off the excess. I don't feel like I need to use any glue or anything because the teeth of that, um, that crimp is going to hold that, I think that uh, ribbon fairly nicely. So here I go, there's the piece, the component that I made. I'll just slip that knot in there. And I'll use my chain nose pliers, or flat nose pliers if you have them, to just close it, just squeezing it tight on each side. And making sure that I got, I, I'm gonna push that knot in just a little bit more and then I'll close it up again. There we go. and that should hold it pretty securely. So I've done that on each side. And now I'm going to put the jump ring, the main jump ring, in the hole. And this is of course a larger jump ring to accommodate the hole, the width of the pendant, and then also the stringing material. So you want to keep that in mind. Again, we're just going to open this jump ring. twist and thread that on. Now normally I would just close this up but um, if you look at the pre-made ones you can see that that would have slipped through if I had closed this jump ring up it would have slipped through easily but this particular necklace finding that we've made has a pretty hefty little end on it so it won't fit through that jump ring. So I'm going to go ahead and string my uh, my necklace on first before I close it up and then just go ahead and close it. Twist it close, a couple twists to seat it and you're good. That's it. So we've seen another way to make another necklace type component this time using ribbon and a ribbon clamp or ribbon crimp. So here's the finished piece. Here's, we could have strung it on this particular plain black uh, waxed cord or a leather cord would have been nice. We could have used some beads. I think we'll look at that uh, beading in a future pendant. But I decided I wanted to have a black and white ribbon. Tell me what you think. Which do you think would have looked best? 
Um, I don't know. Do you think the glass pearls would have been too much for this simple pendant? Or do you think that would have been nice? Which uh, necklace would you have preferred? Three choices there. And of course, lots of choices once you learn to make your own. You can, you know, the sky's the limit on the types of materials that you can use. So that's all there is to this one. I hope you've enjoyed number three in this pendant series. Uh, just a pretty simple uh, black pendant with white pearl dotting, some swooshes for some to jazz it up just a little bit, and our own necklace component. I'm um, hoping to just show you that once you learn some basic techniques, you can create any kind of uh, necklace that you like um, using basic findings that you can get at the at the jewelry making store, simple tools and little imagination, and you can make uh, custom necklaces uh, to fit your jewelry pieces. So again, I hope you've enjoyed this series. Please let me know. I'd really love it if you'd subscribe. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoy the video. Leave me a comment. I really like hearing from you. Um, I think we're building a great community, and I really appreciate all of you watching. Thanks for joining me in my studio for this project. Take care.